In this playlist, we're going to talk about networking. And this is the ability for programs to talk to each other and possibly even across computers from one computer to another. The importance of networking has grown dramatically over time. And at this point, you're probably aware that if you were to turn off the networking on a computer or a device that you're using, it becomes much less effective. Pretty much everything that we do these days is a networked application. Now, a lot of times that networking is done at a high level through, uh, for example, the web interface and using a, um, a protocol called HTTP. We're going to talk about kind of the lower level networking that sits under that. And basically, there are two low level protocols that are broadly in use at this point. They are called TCP, which stands for the Transmission Control Protocol, and UDP, which is the User Datagram Protocol. And the difference between the two, TCP, which is what I would argue the majority of communication is, is done over, guarantees that messages get across. It's almost like certified mail. So when a computer sends a packet and data is, is put together in these little packets, when it sends a packet over to a different computer, it gets back a response letting it know that it got there. And if it doesn't get that response, you, it will try again. And if it fails a certain number of times, your, your program will actually get an error message. So with TCP, if something goes wrong and your message isn't delivered, you will find out. There will be an exception in our code. UDP, on the other hand, is used for certain specific applications that need speed and are willing to tolerate things being lost. Okay, so it just sends a packet of data across the network and hopes that it gets to the other side. And if you have a good network connection, odds are it will get to the other side. Uh, but some things will be lost, even on a good network connection. We are going to focus on the TCP, uh, in part because of the extra challenges that are that come into play when you do UDP. Um, and in part because it, it doesn't just make our lives easier, it is kind of the thing that's used most. If you were going to do, for example, a networked game, Gaming is one of the areas where they use UDP a lot because they care about the network speed. Okay, so to start off with, we're going to write a simple chat application. And we're actually going to, so that we can illustrate it, write a chat application that where we create both the client and the server. So I'm going to make a chat client and I am also going to make an app called chat server. And we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about what these should do, but I want to show you kind of the code that's used in order to set things up. So when you're doing your networking through TCP, you wind up creating things called sockets. And this is probably an area where it helps to go look in the API. We are using the Java API here again. There is a package called java.net for networking. And so we'll be using a lot of things that are inside of here. There is a class called a socket and there is a class called a server socket. And so on the server side, you create a server socket and you have to give it an integer for what's called a port. Now it turns out that the way things are set up there are two to the 16 ports available on your computer. So that means that you can go up to 6,535 uh, as your, your largest port number. And they are allocated in certain ways. For example, everything from 0 to 1,023 is kind of reserved. You cannot create, your programs cannot work on those ports. Generally, they require super user access. From the 1,024 up to 49,151 are technically reserved and companies can, can, uh, can request that a certain port be used for their application. Now, of course, it turns out you can use most of those ports because you're not running all of those different applications. Only one program can use a port at a time. So if you happen to be, we want to use a port. So for example, maybe I'll use 4,000 in, in, in these videos. 4,000 is technically in that uh, area for registered ports, and it 
if we were to go look, it's possible that some program is saying that it uses 4,000, but as long as I'm not running that program on my computer, that isn't an issue. So the server socket has one main method that we're going to worry about, and that is accept, and that is a blocking call that waits for a client to connect, and when it does, it gets back a normal socket. So let's look in code on the server here. As I said, what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to make a server socket and we'll try putting this on port 4000 and if I call accept on that I get back a socket and so we could print line accepting print line got socket and just for funsies we could actually print out that socket not that it's going to print anything that's particularly useful to us on the client side we can create socket objects directly so if we go to socket there is a there's quite a few different ways you can create sockets the one that we are going to work with is the one where we give it a host and a port so this is a socket connection that goes to a different computer, though it could be the computer. In this case, I'm going to run all of my examples on one computer. The server will be here and the, the client will be here, but it doesn't have to be. We can specify the computer we want to connect to, and it could be some other computer, and then the port number that we want to connect to on that computer. Um, and of course, if there's no program listening on that port on that computer, our connection attempt will fail. So in here, I'm going to create another socket, but this one I'm creating directly by building a socket. And this socket, I need to give it a machine name. Now, if you're running your program on your local computer, you can always use localhost. And I just have to make sure that I use the same port number here. So print line making socket print line socket made okay let's try running these so if I run the server it prints out accepting and then it hits this call now remember this is a blocking call so this is just going to sit there and wait until a connection comes through if I come over here and I run this it well, this, I'll have to jump between them. The client said making socket and then socket made. And then the server wound up getting the socket and it printed out some information. It told us where this came from, uh, the port where it originated, and the port that it's using for the, for the connection. So this gives us kind of a brief introduction. These sockets are kind of the underlying mechanism that is used for all of the the networking that you do uh, basically no matter how you do your networking there's there's sockets underneath it even if you're using UDP there there's a different class called a datagram socket uh, but the socketing underlies all of the networking that uh, that will do and what we want to do is we want to build up on this chat application um, we need to figure out how to talk through these sockets so we'll come back and we'll look at how we can take this a step further so that we can actually send messages back and forth. And not only back and forth, I'd like to be able to run multiple clients and have them communicate as well.